now we've talked about types of languages, we can talk about translators, which are programs that convert code from one language into equivalent code written in another. And we need this because all code needs to be translated to machine code in order to be executed by computer. Everything needs to be in machine code to be executed. And we don't want to do that ourselves, so we do use a program to do that. And there are three main types of translators, the first of which is an assembler, which takes converts assembly code into machine code. An assembly uses the processor's instruction set to convert the instructions written in assembly to the machine code equivalent, and the output of an assembly is an object file. So there are various terms to do with translators like object code, which we're not going to really talk about, but object code is pretty much machine code just with some extra instructions. Basically, modern translators are more complicated than what I'm going to talk about in this video, but this will be sufficient for this level. So because of the one-to-one -one nature of machine code and assembly code, i.e. one assembly instruction corresponds to one machine code instruction. It's quite easy to do this process but there will be optimization especially in modern assemblers such as uh, replacing subprogram calls by inline functions so basically if you've got a very small function calling the subroutine or subprogram it's got a certain overhead which is quite slow it's a lot quicker just to basically copy and paste the code in if it's a small function so that's what I mean by that and things like evaluating constants so various optimizations will occur at this stage and that's pretty much it for the assembler assembly code is used by the way you may think why would you use assembly code if high level is easier well it, you can program directly in assembly code which is very useful especially when memory and processor speed is at a premium so when you've got say an embedded device which you want to be very cheap to make and programming in assembly you can do it directly, it's very easy. Assembler is very simple and quick and small in terms of its size if you need to ship it along with your source code and so on. So assembly code is still used. The second type of main translator is the compiler, which goes from high level to machine code. So a compiler scans through the whole code and translates it all into machine code. So it does it as one unit. And the compiler will produce a program that can be directly executed by the computer. So it will basically produce a binary file, like a .exe file. A really key point about compilation is that once you've compiled it to produce this binary file, you don't need the compiler itself, the program, or your source code. You don't need to distribute it along with your binary file, for example. So if you don't want people to see your code, you want to compile it because you don't want to send them your source code, essentially. Another point, perhaps, for evaluation is the fact that error messages are only shown after you scan through the whole code. If you've got a very small program, the translation is pretty much instantaneous, but if you've got a long one, with loads of code it takes a significant amount of time so if you compile it only for it to not work because you've got an error then you've wasted a lot of time so it can be quite difficult for debugging in that sense so an interpreter is an alternative to a compiler this also goes from high level to machine code obviously we're talking about a generic type of translator here not one for each language you need an interpreter for python or for ruby or so on so an interpreter works differently to a compiler because it works line by line. I mentioned that the compiler basically translates the whole code as just one block, whereas an interpreter will translate a line and then immediately execute it. So translate, execute for each line or each statement really. So the issue is every time you want to execute a code, it has to be translated again. You can't just run your code by using a binary file like we talked about with a compiler. You have to do this whole translation every time you want to run your code. So that can be quite tedious. But a plus side is that it does stop whenever it reaches an error. And once you write some code, you get kind of an instant response, basically, because it executes it sort of there and then. Another downside, the opposite of a compiler, is that when you ship your code, you need to have the interpreter and the source code at all times. You need both in order to run. So your interpreter is a separate program that takes up space, and also your source code, anyone can see it. So that's a bit of an issue. So generally speaking, an interpreter is slower than a compiler. And just to end this video, just a bit of a caveat, I suppose. It is more complicated than we're talking about. There are tons of optimizations that happen in modern translators. They might use, it might be interpreted part of a way and then use compiled subroutines. There are various things it can do to be more efficient. And you may also hear the terms bytecode and object code. Bytecode is there to solve the issue of specific code for specific machines, i.e. machine code. So bytecode can be run by a virtual machine, and object code, as I said, is kind of machine code plus some extra stuff which can't be directly executed. So it's a bit more complicated, basically. You don't need to worry about this, but I want you to be aware that it's not always as simple as saying Python is interpreted. It can be more complicated than that.